Princess Diana, as you say, was a voluntary member of that dynasty. She didn't have to be in it. She joined it. She didn't behave very well in it. She was a spoiled kid. She didn't, she didn't realize that there was more to it than just being the fairy tale princess. She rebelled against the idea that you have to sacrifice anything for duty or tradition, an idea that her rather gloomy husband certainly overdid, um, but nonetheless that he, he does possess a sense of responsibility. She thought, surely this means if you're a princess, life is a party. When she came to America, she could have met anyone she liked. They said, who do you want to meet? She said, John Travolta. That was his princess. She'd never read a book from beginning to end. She's um, a borderline airhead, in fact, was a borderline airhead, a gold digger, a tremendous gold digger with a, a sharp lawyer, did a tremendous job of, of uh, cashing in on her own um, divorce, did, in return for this, one day in Bosnia, one day in Angola, and was very nice to a person who was actually a friend of mine, Adrian Ward Jackson, when he was dying of AIDS, when the royal family told him maybe AIDS wasn't the right cause. I'll give her all that, but that's all she wrote, that's it. And the most abysmal taste in men. Some of them, as the caller says, married to other women whose lives were made miserable by the princess. So, and the guy she was actually trying to uh, get off with when uh, his bodyguards and the, t imagine the sort of people who are bodyguards for the Al Fayed family and the Paris Ritz Hotel, the, where the Fayed family has boasted of buying British parliamentarians and bribing and blackmailing them in, in the last few months alone. Imagine the sort of characters you're running with there. Um, her final choice of guy was perhaps the worst of all. Well, I, I can't add much to that. You know, the, the thing, I don't, I, I, the idea that, that Diana was uh, some uh, vulnerable uh, young woman who was being mistreated by the royal family, she was actually very clever, if, uh, if not uh, as intelligent as a lot of people think she may have been. Uh, and I have to think that this uh, this romance with uh, with Dodi <coughs> Fayette uh, might might very well have been uh, a, a strategy on her part. I can't believe that she did not know that uh, she could not marry this man because the, if she had, she probably would have turned the uh, British people against her overnight uh, because of uh, of all kinds of political reasons why she couldn't marry him. She was the mother of a future king of England. Uh, she could not marry a Muslim man, to be very about it, uh, and she knew that. Well, the, the law, the British law only says she can't marry a Catholic. Well, I'm, no I'm, I'm not talking about what the that. law is. I think well, it, the, the public... The royal family is very broad-minded. Well, but the, it's, the, the British people would have been very, I, I think, I, I, I defer to your judgment on this, but I would think that they would, uh, would find uh, th that that was inappropriate in the same that when Jackie Kennedy uh, married uh, Onassis, uh, she lost a lot of the luster and a lot of the glitter. But not because he was Greek Orthodox. No, because he was. Uh, he, he did not strike uh, most people as the uh, as the kind of prince I, who should marry a princess. I don't think that um, there would have been any really serious objection to her, mar her marrying a Muslim. But I think the Al Fayed family, the Al Fayed business dynasty. Um, which has been found by British uh, courts and investigators to be unfit, really, for the stewardship of public business. I mean, that's the, I'm putting it politely here. Um, would, would have created a problem for her, yes, but she went into that absolutely with her eyes open. I mean, got to get a call. We're running out of time. We've got to go to the house early today.